Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and in this video we're talking about the day 13 episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. Isn't it so wonderful? We, it's a teenager. Remember when it was like, like one day old? And the episodes were like seven minutes long? <laughs> now they're all like 15 or 20 minutes long. Um, yeah, so uh, that's what we're talking about in this video. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the discussion points and topics brought up in the episode. And at the very end, I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next time on this series. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the Day 13 episode, here's a link somewhere. You can click on it and know what we're talking about before we talk about it. I'll wait a moment. And we'll jump right in. And normally at this point, I would thank people who have jumped on board to help partner with me to help make this series possible. If you're not familiar, the only reason I'm able to do this series is from the generous support of people just like yourself who have gone to Patreon and have, uh, you know, for as little as a dollar per month, have been helping to keep things going on this channel and help keep things going on this series. It basically allows me to take time around, away from my regular job to put more in, effort in on these kind of things. Um, but in the past couple of weeks, we haven't had any new people jump on board. And Right now, we are not at our, the percentage that we need to do two episodes for this month. This is the first month that we need to have 100% funding, and it seems, like, it seems like there's like a glass ceiling right around like 93% or something like that. Uh, that's kind of like where we have been hanging out, and it's got me thinking, I really don't like doing these pitch things where it's like, ah, you know, you know we need more people to help out and everything. So what... And, and I don't like always having the second episode of the month be like contingent on people jumping on board because uh, that's kind of like holding hostage all the people that, that have shown up. So I've come up with this idea. This is what I'm going to do uh, from here on out. Uh, if you are a Patreon uh, contributor, even at like just a dollar a month, at the, yeah, that bare minimum kind of level, even at just a dollar a month, I'm going to release all of the episodes of alien invasion on Patreon. So it's not the kind of thing where I, I don't like it. Like when I've said this before, there's some Patreon people that want to get the second episode out. So it's like they end up contributing more. And I'm like, ah, that's not cool. Cause you, you know, you already showed up, you know, you shouldn't feel like you have to do that in order to, you know, cover the thousands of people that watch these videos that, you know, that at the moment haven't stepped up and, you know, thrown a dollar into the cause so that I can keep doing these things. So, uh, I'm going to supply all the episodes on Patreon. So even if you're just a dollar contributor, You'll get all the episodes, they'll be released on there. And if we do happen to get to that 100% threshold, then I will be releasing them out uh, you know, on YouTube to everybody. But um, I wanted all the Patreon contributors to know that you're definitely gonna get it. I'm gonna stop doing that thing where it's kinda like, yeah, we can't release it unless we hit this threshold, whatever. Um, Cause it's not really fair to me <laughs> putting in all my time. Uh, you know, if I'm doing this stuff and it's like completely on my dime and like I don't have the partners. But at the same time, I felt like it's not fair to all the people that have shown up you know, if, you know, they're not getting the episodes and they're contributing and helping. So if you would like to help to make this series keep going, and if you would like to definitely get to see the second episode uh, that comes up, uh, you know, the, the, the second episode for this month, then you can go over to patreon.com and for as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to all that kind of stuff. There's no, I don't like tier the access kind of things. It's like you, you do one buck, you get everything. So that's it. And I, I think it's great for having lots of people just contributing just a little bit, you know, $1 a month. I think most people can probably do a dollar a month. I could even do a dollar a month. Um, so yeah, th th that's the, the deal. That's how I'm going to start releasing these things from now on. So enough about that. Uh, let's go on to the topic for this video. And it actually is kind of a topic about saving money. Uh, and it's about uh, doing your own home canning using non-canning jars. Now this is a practice that I've done for a long time. I know a, a few people have suggested it might be a bad idea. Prepper potpourri comes to mind. Um, in fact, Prepper Potpourri and I have kind of a situation, and well, here's what I know about Prepper Potpourri. Prepper Potpourri claims to be a prepping channel, so why did she say that only criminals would need a bug out bag, saying that preppers should get real? It's time preppers flushed PP and got back to worrying about what really matters, aliens invading by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies. Prepper Potpourri, wrong on bugging out? wrong on prepping. I'm Praxis Prepper and I disapprove of the contents of this message. Okay, that was a political ad I did a while ago and I just wanted to play it again because I think it's amusing. So yeah, um, Pepper Potpourri has suggested maybe it's crazy to do this, but I, in my experience, have done this for quite some time and uh, like I say in the video, uh, I have only had a couple of jars fail and I kind of stick to canning things that were in those jars to begin with. 
Uh, that said, I have done pressure canning with jars that had salsa in them that I know, you know weren't pressure canned necessarily. It, were just, it was just made for hot water bath. So I've even tried that and I've had success with that. But I'm always a little careful with it. And whenever I jar stuff like that, I usually like cook it afterwards anyway, just to kind of be sure. Because if you cook something at a rolling boil for five minutes, it'll get rid of botulism toxins even if they were in there to begin with. Um, it won't get rid of the spores themselves, but it's not the spores that kill you, it's the toxins that the organism creates. I think, I believe anyway. So, uh, so that's something that I've been doing and whatever your idea is on how you would approach preserving food in a collapsed environment, I think it's an important skill to have because it's great to be able to stack stuff and store stuff in your basement and everything and have it in all its like vacuum seal packages and all the you know store-bought cans and all that kind of stuff. But eventually that stuff would run out in a long-term situation and you need to be able to preserve things that you have access to. Right now it's summer, the garden's starting to grow, uh, well the weeds in the garden are starting to grow, all those wonderful edible weeds. I have a whole series on that, here's a link up above if you're interested in, in wild edible weeds. But there's all sorts of things that are available now in the summer and in a extended collapse, you would need to be able to preserve that stuff deep into the winter, and canning is a great way of doing that. There's other methods as well, drying, salting, all that kind of stuff. But canning is a really convenient way of storing a lot of the nutrients in it, and you know you don't have to get into like high, high sodium content and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of my general technique, and to save money, I use a lot of these reused cans and I've or jars, and I've had a lot of success with it. Have you guys ever experienced, uh, or I'm sorry, experimented with anything like that? Uh, do you have uh, ideas about other ways of preserving food that are, you know, kind of low tech, that are something that uh, could be done in a collapse situation, especially things that uh, would be possible for people to do if they didn't have a lot of preparations ahead of time? You know, there's a pinch and they're like, oh crap, but at least I have these, uh, these skill sets, this knowledge that would allow the, uh, them to do that. Everyone would love it if you'd share that in the comments below. I know a lot of people love the comments because there's so many really smart people, really generous people who watch this channel. And um, you know, I, I appreciate reading the comments as much as anyone. I, I'm always learning things from you guys too. So that's it. That, that was the basic idea of this episode. And oh my God, something's about to happen at the end. It's like a big plot twist in this one. Something big is about to happen. And it's going to be, you know, the next few episodes is going to be a lot of tumult. So here's a, a little uh, sneak peek of what's going to be happening next time on the series. And again, if we can get to 100% funding for this month, this will be released to everybody. Uh, and if not, if you're a Patreon supporter, you're going to get to see this thing no matter what. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I've been around patrolling all day today and I haven't, haven't seen anything. I've been doing larger and larger circles and uh, I can't see, like, it doesn't seem like there's anybody setting up in the area, getting ready for anything, but they said sundown tonight is is the time. So uh, the plan is Monica's in the house. Uh, she's watching the trip sensors. She's going to defend from there. I'm out here kind of far away from the house, but with a good view on it. So if anybody does try to, you know, attack our place, I can kind of sneak up. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.